Welcome to the Balanced Collective, where we love to go deep, talk big, and get real. I'm your host, Danielle Boyd, and every episode is going to bring a new concept or guest to talk all about things wellness, balance, and alignment. Our purpose here is to bridge the concepts of science and spirit to bring wellness and ease into the lives of our listeners while not taking life too seriously. We like to get down and deep into our shadow while keeping things raw, fun, and real. Thank you so much for listening. Let's get to it. Hey team, welcome to the show this week. I'm super excited to share this episode with you. I had an amazing conversation with our next guest, Megan Suter. Um, Not only did we have an amazing conversation when we recorded, but more recently since then, I actually received a Reiki energy healing session with Megan. And man, that woman is gifted, Um, not only on an intuitive level, but on an energetic healing level. I'm just still floating on cloud nine since since our session. And so thank you, Megan, for that. I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for not only the messages she intuitively channeled, but also just the healing. My body feels fantastic. And so anyone in Vancouver, get in touch with Megan because she's she's incredible. Megan Suter is an intuitive life coach, a Reiki energy healer, and amongst those labels also wears a few more hats, which she expands on a little bit more in our conversation. Um, I'm really excited about this episode because not only did we touch on many of my favorite topics, but we went deep, like we, we talked about some pretty deep things, and I think that a lot of that is going to resonate with a lot of people right now. Um, So without further ado, I am going to present to you my conversation with the brilliant, intuitive, and badass Megan Suter. Great. Hi, Megan. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. It's so exciting. We're sitting in your beautiful apartment in the West End right now, and it's a gorgeous, sunny day, and and it's Friday afternoon, so... Yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, so in an effort to, um, I know myself personally, I've been trying to really describe myself outside of the work mm-hmm. I do. I thought we would start by letting you do the same. Who is Megan? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. We were just talking about this mm-hmm. to not bring your work into it. Um, because it's like so inherent as a business owner, right? Yes. So let's, let me try. Let's give it a <laughs> shot. Uh, well, I'm a human and I love connecting with other humans. That's like the favorite, my favorite part of life is human connection and all of the intricacies and hardships that come from that and like the good stuff that comes from it as well. That's yeah, my favorite part about being alive really. I love that. Thanks. And that's an amazing segue into what you do for work because a lot of, I mean, you, you have a couple jobs and wear a few hats, but ultimately yeah. your your business right now is helping to heal a lot of, of what prevents us from connecting with people. Um, so why don't we go down that rabbit hole and ask a little bit about the work that you're doing and, and switch it into that perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. So I, I do, I wear a couple of different hats. I have two businesses and both are really about connection. Uh, I own a sales agency and run a sales agency that really is built on relationships and um, the success of that agency, which is is quite good, um, is definitely built on like the time that I've spent connecting with my customers and and kind of figuring out what their needs are and encouraging them to tell me the truth. You know, what is it that you need um, and what are you scared to say? And that kind of brings me back to the other side of my business or the other business, which is a, a coaching business that includes, you know, life coaching, um, Reiki and intuitive readings and that's all about human connection as well um, and I think it's like yeah my, my the key is always about getting people to sort of speak the truth that they're really scared to say or don't know that they need to say mm-hmm. um, yeah it's always that like that connection point for me is seeing or knowing that somebody has something to say and kind of like slowly or quickly pulling it out of them. What do you think it is that stops people from speaking their truth? Like, what do you think? I mean, I know that that's a layered question, yeah. but what do you think is a big theme for that prevention or that block of speaking truth? Yeah, that's such a great question and one that is pretty easy to answer. Like, in a broad sense, it's fear. Yeah. Fear of judgment a lot of the time. Fear of 
believing that we're wrong or that someone else is going to think we're wrong or that we're stupid. Um, you know, we're so conditioned and I work a lot with women, uh, and women especially are really conditioned to doubt themselves and it's not to blame, you know, our parents or society or whatever, but that is just kind of, you know, at the, the time that we're at right now in the Western world, women are just like, you know, obviously having a moment, but before that, you know, sort of conditioned to not trust themselves, not express their emotions, you know, kind of keep things hidden. Stifle things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's just fear, mostly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love the broad definition. Yeah. And then, I mean, obviously our fear is conditioned by certain experiences. Exactly. And I think what we would call those experiences and, and those fears are maybe referred to as shadow. Yeah. And so I thought I would let you actually maybe define shadow and, and <laughs> explain what that means in, in your context and in your view. Yeah. So how I work, look at um, and work with the shadow personally and with my clients is... The shadow are just the things that we're em embarrassed about, or the things, I, I often describe it as like the things that keep us up at night. Mm -hmm. um, we all have those, you know, times that we did something or said something or, you know, a behavior that we knew was wrong, but we did it anyways. Those things that, yeah, kind of haunt us. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Totally. Yeah. And so if you kind of think of the shadow as a bit of a haunting, right? Like as a bit of a ghost from our past. Um, and... That's noisy. So noisy. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, though. It's all part of it. Yeah, exactly. That's the shadow saying, like, don't talk about me. Right? Yeah. Um, and so, like, I think Carl Jung defined the shadow to begin with as, as the, the darker parts of ourselves. And, and we all have that. We all humans have, um, yeah, a shadow. And so it's a lot of people will describe it, too, as you know, we all have the ability to be, this is going to get dark really quickly, but like murderers, we all yeah. have the ability to kind of go as far as Hitler went, um, but we just choose not to. And that's like the most extreme side of mm -hmm. the shadow, right? And so in our daily lives, because most of us don't go that far, it is like that time we said something really mean to our mom mm -hmm. and like wanted to say it. Or that time where we pushed somebody and it felt good. Yeah. Um, it's just the darker side of our personality, which literally every single person on earth has. And, um, you know, I believe, like, if we start to embrace and accept the shadow, that doesn't mean act on our shadow behavior or urges. Yeah. Um, that is what makes us different from a murderer. Right. Um, is to, like, not, not kind of go forward and act on it. Uh, but I think if we embrace it and accept it, we become even more of who we really are yeah. as humans. Wow. And accepting it and loving it and shining the light on it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 And just acknowledging like, you know, if you're driving your car and you have kind of like a dark thought about somebody or something. And, you know, when I say dark, I don't mean to make it bad because it is just a thought that we have. Um, and it's like these internal biases that we all are born with or, yeah exactly yeah. you know it's 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 not really by any fault of our own that they're there um that's again like cultural conditioning or familial conditioning and so you're driving your car you have like a dark thought about somebody and it's like instead of like oh god i shouldn't think that oh i'm such a bad person you know adding judgment on top of the shadow or the <laughs> judgment like outside of yourself um we can just say like that's that's interesting hi i see you like what is the real message here like what do I really need to look at by examining that thought? And just sitting with it. Totally. Asking the right yeah. questions. Yeah, wow. exactly. What, in your opinion, are some of the best ways to start? I mean, obviously sitting with it is a huge part of healing that. Yeah. But any specific tools or modalities that you suggest people start to explore for healing shadow? Yeah. So acceptance is step one. And sometimes, I would say all the time, people need knowledge and understanding to accept, right? Mm -hmm. So... It might not just be enough for me to say, we all have a shadow, you know, that might even be sparking in somebody as they listen to this. Um, I don't have a shadow. I don't think bad thoughts. <laughs> I'm not like that. That's your ego, by the way. Um, but, but like, just, just maybe learning a bit more about it. So even just Googling like Carl Jung shadow. Yeah. 
uh, or like what is the shadow, you know, just reading a little bit more about it. And that will give you a broader concept of, of what it is and maybe give you some ple- like pieces to relate to. Um, and then once you've accepted that you that your shadow is part of you, your personality, um, you can ask it to show you what it's there for. Like why, what do, you, what do you want to show me? What do I need to learn about myself? How can I integrate you more, more wholly into my personality uh, or into my life so I don't go around denying you all the time and making you know, decisions from that place? And I do that personally by going into meditation and inviting the shadow in. So that would be called shadow work. Right. Um, I am a big believer in forging your own way. Um, you know, I don't love to like read a ton online or even in books about how to do something. Again, like the knowledge piece is important, but the how to for me is not that important. I design my own rituals and my own meditations and just go by feel. Um, but for me, that's some of the most profound healing that I've ever done is um, going into meditation and asking my shadow to come in and show me, you know, what what I need to know, basically. And where it came from. Yeah. Wow. Do you ever have experiences where, like, you get flashbacks to, like, that shadow kind of being cast in your body? Um, yeah. Well, I can tell you a really specific... Um, yeah, I can just tell you a really specific moment that I yeah. had with my shadow. So shadow is also like shame, like that's right, they're really tied closely together. Uh, a couple of years ago I was on a ferry, BC Ferries, going to Victoria with one of my best friends and her then toddler daughter who would have been like mm, two years old probably. And I was holding her daughter as we were going into the car deck and she wanted to go and look off the side of the, the boat uh, at the water. And I brought her close to the side and she squirmed really aggressively and nothing happened. And in the moment, nothing happened. I didn't even think about what was happening. I just kind of stepped back a little bit from where we were standing and then we got in the car and drove away. That was, yeah, I would say two years ago now. And for 18 months, it kept me up at night. It plagued me, this idea that like, I, I felt so ashamed that I had brought, you know, someone's daughter over to the edge and she could have fallen off and into right. the water. And it was, I believe, my shadow playing tricks on me like, you're a terrible person. Like, that's the narrative that I would get when I would think about it. And mm-hmm. I would, like, cringe and my stomach would turn and I would feel anxious. And, yeah, the story was like, you're such a bad person. Like, how could you do that? Like, that was that. So... When I started learning more about shadow work, I, um, right here in my living room, like I make a little meditation nest and just was like, I'd like to clear this really, like really I'd like to clear this. So let's see what happens. Uh, so that was, this is the first time I did any shadow work and I, I invited my shadow in and I was like, let, show me what I need to know about this situation. And, um, it brought me my subconscious, my shadow brought me to every possible scenario that could have happened in that moment. So wow. <laughs> showed me her slipping and falling into the ocean, showed me her throwing her into the ocean, showing me jumping off with her in my arms, like every single terrible thing that could have happened, I saw. And it just like kept going and kept going and kept going and you know, I'm crying and releasing it in my body and accepting that, like, good people do bad things. You know, I consider myself a, a decent person. And if that had happened, if she had really fallen into the water, it would have been probably one of the more terrible things that happens in my life and certainly in my friend's life. Um, and still, it would have happened. And so that's about, like, for me, that's really just embracing that, like, just because bad things happen or you do bad things, and I'm saying that in quotes because whatever, like they're bad and good or on a continuum, uh, just because you do those things doesn't make you a terrible person. Right. And your shadow really wants you to make you feel like you're kind of a bad person. And, uh, and it's funny because I can tell that story now with like no emotion and no 
shame or no guilt or no fear because nothing happened. Um, and I will just add to that, like that it was emotional and it was really, it was really interesting, like what happened in that meditation and the images that I was receiving and shadow work is really hard work. And so it's important to do it when you're feeling, um, confident and when you're feeling, uh, heart centered and when there's not a lot of outside influence around like shame or guilt on top of what you're going to look at. Right. It's important to be in like a, a thriving mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Be safe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that experience in particular, was it healed after one meditation or did it take a lot more work than that? No, I would say it was like 90% healed probably. Wow. And it, it shows up like every once in a while if I'm feeling shame or guilt about something else, I'll kind of go back to that place or... What's interesting, and I think we're learning this um, in the course that we're taking together, mm -hmm. is like when something kind of pops up and you're like, that's interesting, I haven't thought about that in a while, that makes me feel this way, sometimes that scenario will pop up when I'm avoiding other things. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so like, hey, you don't want to feel the shame or guilt over there, remember this? I'm like, yeah, I do remember that. I thought it was gone. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just a good reminder. <clears throat> it serves as a reminder, I think, to, like, look at something. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think, like, because we've talked about how shadow is there to teach us something. What do you think was the lesson in that experience? That's a good question. I think I was more focused on getting rid of the yeah. scenario, like, the charge of the, the memory um, and if I, you know, what comes to mind right away was just this reminder that no matter what happens in life, um, we all deserve like love and connection yeah. and it's just, I think those things always serve as that reminder. Like you could do the most terrible thing that you can think of and you still deserve love. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and it sounds like it was a big catalyst to learning more about shadow work for you. Exactly. Yeah. It's super interesting. So that, I mean, leads me to another great segue into how, I mean, what is kind of the story in your life that led you ultimately to starting this, this coaching and this intuitive healing and Reiki business? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could start at the very beginning, but <laughs> I won't. Um, you know, I was, I was in, um, kind of a tough place five years ago. I was stuck in this pattern of like choosing unavailable men, um, really pushing my body to its limits in terms of exercise. And then on top of that, like partying, you know, drinking, doing drugs on the weekend, also running a whole other business. And I was really like pushing myself to the limit of who I was and like what I could handle. And at the same time, you know, doing all of those things to avoid some really deep emotional pain um, that I didn't know was there at the time. I didn't know it was there. I had done a lot of therapy in my life um, and had sort of always just thought like, I'm fine, everything's fine, you know, that was kind of the story. But like found myself sitting in this apartment um, just really devastated by like, even though I sort of looked on the outside like had it all together I felt really empty inside mm -hmm. and it was around the time where like Instagram was starting to become popular or like more well known and I started following someone named Mark Groves who we talked about yeah. earlier um, he's created the love on Instagram and I really felt like he was just like speaking to me um, through his Instagram and yeah. you know even though my problems uh, if we want to call them that, were like pretty widespread. It's where I was really focused on was like the, the love piece, the romance piece. And um, so, and he talks, that's, that's what he works on is, is romantic love. And so I reached out to Mark and I didn't know what he did. I didn't know if he was like, I had never even heard of a life coach before. Um, he had a workshop that he used to run called Getting the Love You Want. And of course, like it was on a Saturday and I went out on the Friday night with the guy who I wanted to get the love from and we ended up partying all night and I missed the course. And I, again, woke up devastated in the same like situation that I'd been in for a long time and emailed Mark and said, hey, I missed your course. Um, can I put 
can I put this towards a coaching package or whatever? And he's like, yeah, let's have a call and find out. So we had a call and he said, I told him a little bit about what was going on in my life and including this like part-time relationship that I was in. And he's like, yeah, 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 we can work together. Um, but you got to break up with that guy. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I can't work with you unless you're, I know you're serious about making change and that guy's not good for you. That person, by the way, that that guy is a dear friend and a very good person. It's just we were not a match romantically. Totally. Yeah. 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 50 50 there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, so I did. And Mark and I started working together. We started one on one coaching together. And um, I think a lot like you, I'm the type of person that, like, when I get something, I apply it and then I go to the next thing and the next thing. Like, yeah. once I get it, it's there for life. And it doesn't take me a long time to understand when something is the right choice for me, even though it might feel hard, which healing often does. And after about a year of working together, I also went to his, like, um, what do you call it? Motu, which is this summit he used to host. And um, after that, I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to speak to people on a stage about my story and and help heal other people. And he's like, great, finally. (laughs) I've been waiting for you to say that. And... He connected me with a school in New York called the Flourishing Center, where I studied uh, here in Vancouver, but uh, they're based in New York. I studied positive psychology. Um, And that's what he had studied as well to open his business. And then on the other side, I had been seeing a Reiki healer named Erica in Squamish for eight years. And uh, I was telling her like, oh, hey, I'm going to I'm going to become a life coach. And she sat me down and She's like, you know, I've really been avoiding telling you this because I believe in free will and I really wanted you to come to this on your own, but you are an intuitive. Mm -hmm. And um, she's like, I need to tell you that because I think you're going to be really bored if you just focus on the coaching side of things. She's like, you'll be excellent at it. There's no doubt in my mind, but there is, if you want it, there's more for you out there. And I was like, huh? (laughs) What? (laughs) Amazing. Yeah. And so she was like, why don't you start? She's like, you could just start with your Reiki level one and see what happens. So you don't have to take it with me. Here's some other people. You could also um, study shamanism. Like there's all these things that you could study. Uh, And I chose to study with her and do my Reiki with her. And yeah, that year it all just kind of like, quickly as it does fell into place and I had some crazy spiritual awakenings and some intuitive awakenings and um yeah I just sort of started down the path and here I am wow yeah my business has evolved a bit since then um since like starting the course that we study together yeah uh it's it's changed to have a more like more intuitive and more energetic focus um yeah and that's what got me here so interesting and it it seems to me like you know having these conversations that it takes kind of being in I mean like rock bottom or like the pits of despair in order to really start to look inside and do the healing yourself and when you've done the healing yourself it's so expansive for other people yeah and so I'm like thank you for sharing that because I think that's so powerful being able to share your story like that because that's going to be ultimately if we can heal ourselves we can be expanders and, and heal others around us yeah that's so huge I appreciate the opportunity to say it out loud for that reason exactly you know Mm -hmm. I am vulnerable in things like this and on social media and in person because I feel like my vulnerability is an invite for other people to be vulnerable too whether it's with me or someone else in their life and that's like you say the first step right like I heal myself so I can make room for you to heal too. It gives others the permission to look at their shadow and to be with it and to, to own it. And I think one of the most powerful things for healing and for you know being a strong leader is owning our shadow and owning our, our shit, yeah. for lack of a better word. Yeah. But just you know embodying it and being like, yeah, I did that, but hey, you can't do anything about it now because I know and I'm well aware. And so I have power over that that no one can take from me. That's it, yeah. And it does in a safe way, like if that's possible, um, it takes naming 
you know, what you've done. And, like, without blame or shame or guilt, it's just like, yeah, I used to do a lot of cocaine. Yeah. That, that's just where I was at not yeah. even that long ago, you know, yeah. like two years ago. And there's no... There's no emotional charge to it, and then that's how, like, you mirror to other people. This is what happens when you say it out loud. Yeah. If it's safe, which it is for me to say. Exactly. Yeah. And that's just that you have to be in a place where it does feel safe. Yeah. Because if you're not, then that can open a whole other can. But when you've done the work, and you're well aware of it, and it carries no more emotional charge, Yeah. owning it is one of the most powerful things you can do. Exactly. Um, there's so much I want to unpack right now and there's all these different directions just based on what you've just talked about. But, um, one of the things that came up when you were talking about your story was mm. positive psychology and it's, yeah. that's not a term I'm familiar with. I'd love if you could actually explain a little bit about what positive psychology is. Yeah, sure. So positive psychology is the study of the upward emotions in the human emotional system. So traditional psychology focuses on what without judgment things we would call the lower emotions. Right. So you know, you and I are familiar with the emotional guidance scale. Yeah. And so the lower emotions would be like grief, depression, um, anxiety, I don't know, all of the ones that make you feel bad. Yeah. And I was just going to swear. Do you swear on your podcast? Yep, I swear just like okay. swore. Okay. <laughs> swore like a couple minutes ago. Okay, Go perfect, for it. <laughs> perfect. Um, and then the upward emotions, which just get a little less play in our society. That's the way we're kind of built at the moment, would be like, Joy, expansion, fun, um, hopefulness, contentment. Um, and so positive psychology focuses on thriving people. So that's kind of the key, right? If there's like mental illness or, you know, some depression around, positive psychology can help, but it's not the treatment. Mm. And positive psychology would say like it's also not a treatment on the other side. It's um, like a, a modality in terms of, shifting emotion or shifting vibration or like seeing the positive side of things right? right and sometimes that's impossible if you're in the middle of deep grief you know so it is for someone who is feeling good already gotcha and um it was started by a man named marty seligman at the university of pennsylvania um and yeah it's, it's it basically is the study of the upward emotions and how people thrive when they can tap into joy and contentment and how people thrive when they can turn things around for themselves using what we would call positive psychology interventions. So gratitude is a, a really famous and like well-known intervention that people could use. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lesser known psychology mm -hmm. and it ties a lot into the kind of energetic work um, that we study yeah. and, you know, choosing a better thought or choosing a better feeling when that choice is available to you and it's not always available to you. Right. So yeah. I guess, it, it, like you said, it's for people who are already in that state of mind and not dealing with the more emotional and the, you know, maybe the clinical stuff yeah. that comes with that. Exactly. Um, what are some of the, like your favorite interventions from that? Obviously gratitude is a big part of that. Yeah. But what other interventions have you... It's, I'm so glad you're asking me this, just like <laughs> switching it up and like creating, yeah, me a need for me to go back into my memory bank, but because now it's so ingrained in me and now like meditation is, is a big one. Mm -hmm. So we talk about meditation in positive psychology, exercise is a big one for me. So right. moving my body, um, appreciation of beauty and nature so like mm. we're so lucky we live in Vancouver I live right next to a giant park in Vancouver and the ocean and so just going outside and enjoying that right. um, I'm looking at my textbooks right now to try to find <laughs> some inspiration but yeah gratitude getting out in nature moving my body meditation kind of the things that people are seeming to prescribe a lot these days yeah yeah it's great yeah it's very cool simple um, so now obviously through all of this, you found yourself, you know, doing a lot more spiritual work as yeah. well. Um, how would you define spirituality and would you define it differently than consciousness? I think spirituality is like the, the, for me, the knowing that there is more out there than just me, like than just the, the human Megan. 
Um, there's so many other sort of realms and dimensions and ways of being that we can tie into. Um, and I think that for me is what spirituality is, like the option to look outside of myself for other stuff. Um, what was the other part of it? <laughs> consciousness. Yeah. What is consciousness and how is it different if mm. so than spirituality? I've never thought of that before. But I feel consciousness for me is like that that idea of like choosing a better thought or choosing right. something different than you did last time and in order to sort of gain consciousness it takes like understanding and healing and learning and time so yeah I guess my goal is like greater consciousness learned through some modalities of spirituality and some like you know human-based body-based practices as well right so just having more of that yeah like totally that self-awareness so yeah. it's more consciousness is more the awareness piece of it exactly and spirituality is knowing that there might be something greater than us source divinity or whatever you want to call it yeah 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 exactly very cool thanks um <laughs> I like that definition a lot actually it's funny I was like I always create some questions in my head before the podcast and you know start thinking of it and I, I was reading that one and I was like how did I even come up with that question? Yeah. I, was like, I must have been channeling because that's I your was divinity like, right there. Exactly. Yeah. That's not something I consciously would have <laughs> written down. So that's quite funny. That's great. Um, I want to, <laughs> um, I want to spin a little bit and ask you, so what's next for your business? Like how, where do you see your, your conscious business moving? Yeah. Such a good question. There is a lot of things that are in kind of are floating around right now in my consciousness about, what I want to do next and how I can, you know, my greatest wish is to impact and support as many people as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking the universe, like, what are the ways that that can happen? You know, how can I get outside of the bubble that I'm currently in and expand my reach of, of support and connection to as many people as possible? So I'm sort of waiting a little bit or like open to receiving kind of those inspired action steps that might be next. Interesting. I've often thought about writing a book. Yeah. Um, my own book and then the, the beings that I channel would like me to write a book with them as well. And so there's sort of like two options, which I suppose I could just sort of start anytime and yeah. see what happens. Um, yeah, but I'd really like to just continue coaching one-on-one -on -one. I'd love to do more um, group work so workshops and group programs online very cool yeah that's just it you have so much amazing talent I want to commend you for it and so much um, awareness that yeah why not share it with the world share the, those yeah. gifts with the world because ultimately the more people we can reach the more love we can spread the better the place this world is going to be that's it um I want to talk a little bit about, you mentioned channeling beings yeah. and that, you know, to me, channeling is something brand new. I, sure. you know, last year, if you'd asked me if I knew what it was, I would have had a totally deadpan look and been like, what? Um, and it's a new concept to me and something that I've been very fascinated by. I would love to hear about your experience with channeling and maybe sure. like how you discovered you could do this. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so same for me, like what you just said, I had really no concept of channeling um, outside of like... Um, I you know there's like movies or whatever that in the zeitgeist that we could look to and say like that's channeling or whatever but I really had no concept of it about two years ago and then I took my Reiki level one with my Reiki healer Erica and um, just before that I will, I will say I was again sitting right here in meditation <laughs> and my my neck my my head and my neck started moving in ways that I had never done before. Mm -hmm. I had never moved physically in that way and it was painful. Um, strenuous, painful, my, my head was like, felt like it was rotating <laughs> on my neck <laughs> and it wasn't and it scared me, like really, really scared me. And so went to my Reiki level one and told Erica this, you know, prior to the training and she's like, okay, let's see what happens after the training and, um, I, it, it started happening more frequently in meditation. And then like, not only was my neck moving, but like my whole, my whole top of my body was moving on my hips, like, and going into like a full prayer position, then all the way back onto my back and full prayer position. And my, I couldn't stop it. 
I could, like I could stand up and walk away, but the momentum was not made by me. Um, and so she's like, I think you're opening to channel. Wow. And I was like, I honestly don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> and, um, and she's like, it's safe. You're safe. Like, and you know, we talk, there is like a big safety factor when it comes to energetic boundaries and like dealing with other entities that are not human. Um, and that's, you know, a whole other, other story. But I'm saying that because I think it's important to like, remember that it's cool to do these things and fun to do these things. And I think it's popular at the moment to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And if like anyone who's listening feels like they have this gift or what I just said resonated with them, get in touch because there's safe ways to do it. Right. And that's not to scare people. It's just like there are some rules around it that yeah. are good to put into place. So she helped me with that. And then it was just a matter of practicing. Um, so there's a, di- there's a few different ways to channel. You can orally channel. So right. you can allow a, a spirit or a guide or an entity or in my case, um, someone who identifies or something that identifies themselves as a light being to fully embody your body. And you open your mouth and they speak from your mouth. Right. (laughs) Uh, That is difficult to do for me. I find it's a lot easier for me to allow them to embody my body and then I actually type Mm. at my computer. And so if I want to speak to them about something specific that I want answers for, I will type out the questions um, to begin with before I start channeling. And then I will invite them into my body through the ritual that that I do and then they will just answer the questions that I've typed there. And then I often will just say out loud or um, type, please write, please, if there's anything else that I need to know, just let me know. And then they'll often just kind of go off on a tangent about something. <laughs> and um, I, have, I have the utmost respect for the light beings that I channel, and I, I just want to make sure that's clear. It's, um, it is a tangent because it's, it's often just like mind-blowing what they're saying to me. Um, and the message that they want me to share with the world. But yeah, it, it took time. It took about 18 months for me to get totally comfortable where I'm at now with them. Wow. And it didn't come right away. Like I didn't know they were light beings right away. So when I figured that out, I had discovered a modality, a healing modality that you and I both like called breath work. And I had done a breath work session on my own here at my house and uh, coming out of that like integration period that happens in breath work, you're in this like really spacey kind of like 5D place. Mm-hmm. And I sat up in meditation and my body was just pulled in a way that I had never felt pulled before really to my computer. Wow. And they opened my computer. Yeah. Uh, and I realized I was had like been embodied by something and they just started typing and they said, Hi, Megan. Um, This is Light Being One. We want you to know that you are loved, you are safe. We've been trying to talk to you for many months now. Wow. uh, And you're like, you're able to do it. And then just like kind of reiterated over and over again, we love you. You are loved. We are here in love. This is safe. You are safe. Everything's fine. Archangel Michael is here with you as well. He's always looking out for you. Um, yeah, you are safe and we love you. Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps listening to that story. That yeah. is so cool. Thanks. Yeah, it was so, so wonderful. And I was like, you're still there. I'm still there when I channel. I'm like, yeah. I, it's almost, my teacher describes it as like a conversation between, you know, finite Megan, which is me, mm-hmm. human Megan, and infinite Megan, um, and the light beings. And so... Yeah, it's kind of this three-way conversation. And so in the middle of it, I can sort of say, like, sometimes they'll type something that's so outrageous, and I'm just like, no, no. And they're like, yeah, that's what we mean. It's like, okay, okay, great, let's Thank keep you. going. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very neat. So yeah. I do think a book would be an incredible thing then. Right. I'd love to hear what their message is and, and what they're channeling through you, because that sounds incredibly fascinating and healing. Yeah, it's... I think there's like some fear there for me, um, you know, a bit of ego fear around like, are people going to believe me? Does this sound crazy? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's like, it's healthy, I think, even for me to be skeptical. Um, So that's probably the piece that's like stopping me from 
actually sitting down and writing it because I don't think it would take that long if I committed to doing it. Wow. Yeah. But I'm and and you know the time will come when you're ready and yeah. and that will be when the message comes through like purely clearly and beautifully. Exactly. So that's just set everything in divine time. That's right. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> reminder. Thank you. X marks the spot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we know that. Um so to kind of pivot a little bit into, you know, working with clients. Mm. Let's say you had a new client come in, someone who's not particularly spiritual or hasn't really been open to the concepts of positive psychology. Yeah. Where would you advise someone to start who's looking to kind of go on a bit of an inner journey? Yeah, such a good question. I think it would really depend on each person. And I mean, even the idea that someone who doesn't have a lot of experience or maybe is a skeptic or whatever in the energetic realms or the even just positive psychology, the fact that they showed up at my door is a sign that they're ready to take a journey yeah. um, or at least the next step in their journey. Yeah. And I would remind them of that. And generally, there is a symptom that mm-hmm. people are feeling like, I uh, what I often hear in my pro- my practice is I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. I'm in this relationship and I want out. I'm in this job and I want out. I you know there it's like this feeling of stuckness. Mm-hmm. And so that's generally truthfully for people that come to see me the overall symptom. And then there is like, you know, a specific thing or place where that's really bugging them. And so probably from there, I would just recommend a book or like a podcast and just to like get the, the like subconscious listening a little bit, right? Just, and just like point out a couple of places where like, what do you think this is? Like this situation here, like, what does that remind you of from your past? Or what, what is the feeling that that generates? And you know, working also with Reiki and the chakra system, um, you, I can get a feel quite quickly, even just by looking at someone, what's going on with their chakra system, or mm-hmm. hearing a little bit of their story. I can kind of figure out where there's an excess or a deficiency, and then I can recommend, even just like if they're a physical person, exercises to do, yeah, um, to just kind of get that chakra moving in the direction that it needs to get, and. All it takes for any person on this kind of journey is like that trigger and like mine was pretty serious, Mm -hmm. but others might just be like, I got fired from my job one time and like the rest of my life is cool. Um, But it just sort of takes something to push you off that ledge and then it's up to you to kind of take the next steps. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. in terms of like books or podcasts mm-hmm. or resources, what are mm-hmm. some of your, your favorite resources that you would direct people to right now? Yeah, so so a big part of the work that we're doing in our course is the Abraham Hicks work, so yeah. Ask and It Is Given. Mm-hmm. Um, a really, really beautiful book and a great way to start. Great way to learn about, you know, what's interesting is they're describing positive psychology right. essentially as well. And just not calling it that. So that's a great place to start for people who just want to learn a little bit more about how to shift their vibration or their emotion or their emotional state. I also love Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life. Um, Great starting point for people who are kind of stuck in relationships that aren't going anywhere. My favorite recommendation is a book called Choosing Me Before We. Mm. I can never remember her name. Uh, It's a female (laughs) author. It's a really interesting name. I'm like looking at my bookshelf now to see if it's there, but it's not. Uh, Yeah, but it's called Choosing Me Before We. And it's a great book. Awesome. It's the first self-help book that I ever read. Ah. And it was, yeah, life-changing for me. It obviously resonated. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) Well, we'll find the author and I'll put it on the the website for the the, um, show as well. Perfect. Very cool. What about podcasts? What are you listening to? Mm, That is my my go-to. Me too. Dang. So... Because I live so much in like the healing and the spiritual world, I tend to listen to podcasts outside of that world, actually. Mm, interesting. Do you want me to share? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I really love the Dax Shepherd podcast. Yeah. It's called Armchair Expert. Yes, I've heard of that. Do you, yeah. I've never listened to it, but I, I hear good things, actually. So Yeah, and he's a pretty woke guy or, or a woke, a, awake guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm catching myself because I'm I'm not supposed to use that word. Um, yeah, so that actually brings me to another one, which is about social justice. So mm. I listen to a podcast called Throwing Shade, which is 
uh, a, a guy and a girl, best friends, both comedians, um, talking about a queer issue and a women's issue each mm. week from the realm of like comedy. Gotcha. Yeah, and so I learned a lot about you know privilege and um, yeah, the lack of privilege outside of people who are not white um, from that podcast and wow. queer people and women and like the plight of women and queer people all around the world. Interesting. Yeah. And probably a lot of um, a lot of help in terms of like how we can also be advocates for those populations too potentially. Exactly. Yep. Very yeah. Cool. And then one last one that I listen to a lot is called and it's in that same vein called That's Not How That Works. Hmm. And it's hosted by two women of color who are life coaches actually who started a podcast to help people in this realm. So healers, coaches, um, people who are connecting with the public in hopes of helping them heal, uh, teaching them how to create safe spaces for marginalized people. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. And also really funny and interesting. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. I have... The only one I'd heard of is the Dak Shepherd one. Haven't listened to it. So you just gave me a whole bunch of uh, new materials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope you've got lots of time. <laughs> I've got a big drive coming up soon. So this is fantastic. Good. Um, before I ask you the last question, um, where can people find you online? Like, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah. So by the grace of God, my all of my handles are Megan Jane Suter. Perfect. Yeah. And that'll just be like spelled out here, right? Yeah. I don't need to spell it. Yeah. Okay. So Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and my website is Megan Jane Suter. Amazing. Yeah. It's super easy. Yeah. Clear. I know. love it. It's perfect. Um, so the last question, I ask this to everyone. Okay. Um, what is your definition of balance? Oh, oh what a great question. <laughs> uh, the first thing that came to mind is, is sleep. So I think it's like, for me, sleep is so key to my wellness, my overall health. Mm. Uh, I would be, I think I could say that's probably the truth for everybody. Maybe not everybody believes that or wants that in their life, but sleep is the key, I think, to integration and and healing. And so for me, I feel most balanced if I'm sleeping seven to nine hours and really listening to my body as I move through my day. And so whether that's pain or emotion or anxiety or a numbness, you know, I know that I'm living a balanced life if I can check in with my body through breath or connection a moment um, and just see how I'm feeling that way. Mindfulness, awareness, listening to it, intuitive and getting sleep. Yeah. Um, Have you listened to the podcast with uh, Joe Rogan and I believe his name is Dr. Matthew Walker about sleep? No. Oh my gosh. And obviously like, you know, and my scientific background I've been very aware of the need for sleep but this podcast blew my mind right. in terms of like sleep and knowledge and, and whatnot so for anyone who wants to learn more about the importance of sleep great episode. okay good really really great thanks episode. for that recommendation yeah well I want to thank you so much for taking your time to do this because I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation Me too. and I feel like we can have several more so <laughs> stay tuned because we will definitely be doing this again thank you awesome. so much thanks Danielle Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found this episode as expansive as I did. If you enjoyed listening, please like, subscribe, and review. It means so much to us. If you would like to learn more about The Balanced Collective and our offerings, please visit www.thebalancedcollective.com or hit us up on Instagram at The Balanced Collective. Thank you so much, and please keep spreading your light.